Are you thinking about flight simulators? I know I have been. Do you have one of these? I got a couple. Maybe you should build one of these. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Hello everybody, welcome back, welcome back. I'm C Ray Sim Flying. I'm also known as C Ray Sim Trucking. Um, you can check out my other channel, I'll put a link here in the description. Uh, if you like American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator, that's where I do all my stuff for that over there. But here, we play X-Plane 12, we fly Cessna 172s, and we do our damnedest to try to create our own indoor Cessna C-172. So to do that, I've been working on different things here and there. Uh, you may be familiar with the original switch panel that I think started it all. And I kind of <clears throat> apologize, I should have already had this done, but I'm just waiting on a couple more switches. I got an on-off on an LED light, and then I need to swap out this switch down here with an on-off on. But yeah, if you've got one of these little USB encoders here, you can build this whole setup here. I've got a yoke, I've got a throttle mixture, I've got a button just loose um, to show you that, it, like right now I'm just using it as a brake, but I've still got 11 additional inputs so with one USB encoder, I mean, realistically, <clears throat> I could connect all the switches. I've got 12 switches here. I've got eight here, and then this is um, two per switch here. So that's my 12. So with two USB encoders, which are about, I mean, they're a couple, they can be as cheap as a few dollars up to about five or six dollars. But you could easily build out almost everything. I've got, I would have all my switches covered. With the second USB encoder, I would be able to set up the f additional four potentiometers. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did all that, or at least how you can do all that. My intentions will be to probably use uh, this Arduino to power the G1000 that I've been working on, but. Just to go over this setup here, I'll have links in the description to everything so you guys know everything that I used, um, all the links that I used, all the projects that I downloaded, all the files that I printed, everything. So to start, I created this throttle mixture setup, borrowing some bits and bobs from different projects and creating some of the stuff myself. Um, the faceplate I created myself, I will have that available on my Thingiverse. The throttle mixture knobs are a part of a project where they actually give you a box that you can print. Really nice enclosure. I'm um, going to be honest, I was kind of being skimpy on my filament usage, so that's why I created this faceplate. Um, it was It's kind of funny, so I created the faceplate, and I was going to make it two parts, and the bottom piece was going to be another piece of uh, PETG that was going to have a little lip on it, and then I was going to screw them together. Well, <clears throat> I started printing it and it had failed and I started kind of beat myself up about the wasting of the filament. So I took a break. My wife wanted to go to the dollar store and they had these acrylic plates there and it's the same dimensions as what I was trying to print. So I was just grabbed one of those. Um, in fact, somewhere, I've got another one. I don't I don't know what I did with it. But yeah, the acrylic plate fit perfect. So I um, actually used some epoxy and super glue and I glued these together, uh, mounted the slide potentiometers. Sorry, I'm getting it out of focus. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer to it for you. So yeah, we've got the two slide potentiometers. I've got the USB encoder mounted in the back. This was the start of this project. I got this together, I tested it out. It was working so well, I was just very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> once I got this together, I knew it was time to be able to assemble the yoke. Uh, maybe a month or more ago is when I started printing all the pieces for the yoke. 
Um, I had some PTG, which is what I've been primarily printing most of the stuff out of. Um, it's in a very wild green color, but <laughs> I had enough of it. So I started printing all this out. Strangely enough, I ended the project with the yoke itself printing, and I almost ran out of filament. I was like, you know, bite my nails waiting for it to finish, and I had just a tiny little tail left once it was done, so it worked out perfectly. Yep, <clears throat> I did print, so in the project files, they tell you you can use a 25 millimeter PVC pipe, which I couldn't find that that existed. I'm not sure if he meant PEX pipe or some kind of different pipe. If you watch the actual build video, um, what he's using is not PVC that I've that I'm used to seeing. So I actually printed out the supplied rod that he had in the files. The problem with that was is the tolerances are a little off on this, so I did have to sand quite a bit. You'll notice up uh, where the yoke attaches, um, I could, I sanded it forever. I got it in as far as I could, and honestly, I just threw some epoxy on it. And as a prototype and seeing how this works, it's it's been fine. I haven't had any problems. Um, everything else was pretty good. Uh, one thing to note when printing this rod, if you do decide to print it, um, I printed it standing up. You will have, it'll be kind of noisy unless you sand it down because the, like the, I don't know what to call it, the layer lines will rub. Um, so I, that took care of that. <clears throat> I also took a little bit of candle wax and kind of put it on there to a, quieten it down a little bit more. Um, everything wired up really simply. Um, I will have both links that I use to build this out that kind of go over what you need to do to get these potentiometers to work with these USB encoders. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. As long as you know how to use a soldering iron and you got a steady hand, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I ripped some jumpers off of this goofy little motherboard that I had that doesn't work anymore. Um, it's from like a, I can't even remember what this thing was. I think it was like a super small form factor. It's got like an Intel Atom in it or something. Either way, it had like the fan headers and stuff because I didn't have any on hand, so I just ripped them out of this and then moved them over into the USB encoder and that made it a little bit easier to attach the wires. I was, I'm going to do at some point is I want to paint all these pieces. Uh, I think what at that time I'll probably put some um, sheathing over these wire, wires so that they can be kind of camouflaged. Uh, another thing that I thought of that it would be probably better is I could drill a hole through the base and then run all these wires underneath so that you can't see any of them and then that would be really clean. <clears throat> so I might do that. I might make some tweaks here and there. I just used some dollar store leather to cover this. This is just particle board. It's got some felt pads on the bottom so that it doesn't scratch anything. If you can see them here. Um, this is just the top of a cigar box that I attached to the side with also some felt feet. You can see the clear acrylic plate that I used. Yeah, this was an incredibly cheap build. I can't even like, <laughs> I can't even express how cheap this was. Um, I mean, obviously having a 3D printer really made a big difference, but um, yeah, just <laughs> the potentiometers, the USB encoders, all that stuff's sub $10 a part. And, I mean, you can get like 20 potentiometers for $10. But, yeah. I don't want to keep rambling. I just wanted to give you guys an update and show you what you can accomplish with very little these days. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I have links in the description to everything um, so that you guys can put something like this together yourself. Uh, feel free to shoot me any questions if you have any. Um, if not, I hope everybody enjoyed. And as always, happy flying.